Our other headline story in development in the past couple of hours. Russia's foreign minister has claimed that the international chemical weapons watchdog, the OPCW, may have misidentified the type of nerve agent used against the Skripals in England last month. More details on that now from correspondent Hanisha Sethi. Hi there. So potentially another chapter opens in this case. Yeah, so let's first get up to speed with the findings of the results from the OPCW um, who delivered their analysis on the chemical attack on the Skripals. Now, in this report, the OPCW confirmed the composition of the nerve agent was in line with the findings of the United Kingdom, um, who say that the chemical used to um, poison Yulia and Sergei Skripal was said to be Novichok, a type of nerve agent produced by the Soviet Union, but they were unable to specify the origin of that. Um, but during the analysis, the OPCW gave samples of the agent to four designated laboratories um, and Russia has contacted one of these designated labs. Now, a Swiss laboratory has allegedly said that there were traces of another nerve agent um, found in the sample it was given, a toxin called BZ. Now, it turns out that these findings were excluded from the report by the OPCW. Um, the Russian Foreign Minister, Sergei Lavrov, has been speaking on these findings. The analysis is more consistent with the use of the poisonous substance BZ. None of these facts, and nothing at all about BZ, was mentioned in the final OPCW report, which was presented to its executive board. We request that the OPCW explain why such information and the conclusion of the Spiers laboratory was omitted from the final report. So the toxin is called BZ. It's a white crystalline powder, slightly soluble in water, and is a nerve agent, so extremely harmful. And the toxin was never produced in Russia or in the Soviet Union. Uh, however, the BZ nerve agent was developed by the US Army in the 1950s. Now, these findings um, were not produced in the report published by the OPCW. They were left out or rather not taken into consideration at all. Um, even if the substance is Novichok, however, the Russian Foreign Ministry has said that about 20 countries can produce this chemical. Um, and some chemists have even questioned the potency of the nerve agent Novichok as well, saying its consequences could have been much worse. If inhaled, symptoms appear and death follows in minutes. If it gets on the skin, symptoms and death can take from minutes to hours. Novichok is supposed to be very toxic, highly toxic, uh, five to eight times more toxic than, than VX, which is all already very, very toxic. So um, small amounts uh, uh, should have killed uh, uh, Mr. Skripal for sure. But, but again, it's very difficult to, uh, to assess and evaluate this kind of, uh, of question before knowing exactly uh, how the product was delivered. It's been well over a month now since Eula and Sergei Skripal were found unconscious on a bench in Salisbury. And Eula Skripal since has been discharged, she, but the former double agent Sergei Skripal is still in hospital but remains in a stable condition. OK, so it seems like plenty more questions being raised there then. For now, though, Hanisha Sethi, thank you very much for updating us on what the Russian Foreign Minister had to say in the past couple of hours or so. Uh, Russia's foreign minister has claimed that the international chemical watchdog, as we mentioned, may have misidentified the type of nerve agent used in the, uh, against the Skripals last month. I think we can talk to our guests now, uh, Professor James Tor, who's a chemical weapons expert and organic chemist. Uh, thanks for joining us on this. Um, I hope you can shed a little bit more light. Um, I don't know how well you know the OPCW's findings or the way it works, but what would your theories be? for it to may have excluded findings from its report if indeed there were other traces of a nerve agent? Well, I, I can't really comment on, on what their motivations are, but if there was another agent, the 3 quinucleidine benzylate, which is this BZ agent, that has nothing to do with a, with a nerve agent. That's not even used to kill. I mean, that's, used, that's an incapacitating agent. That is just used to cause behavioral and cognitive dysfunction. Uh, it's, it causes delirium. It's, it's nonspecific. It's a hallucinogen. And so it's used to incapacitate people in, in say, a wartime effort if you wanted to go in. But, but it's not used as a lethal agent. So that's not something that's used to kill anybody. Uh, even the numbers on that are not known how much would be needed to kill a person. And there's no data on using it for, for except by injection or by aerosolization. In other words, uh, uh, put into a mist form 
or, or injected into the bloodstream or under the skin. It's the only numbers that are known for this. Uh, when it was weaponized by, by uh, the United States, it was weaponized as an aerosol. Mm -hmm. And so to think that this came through the skin is, is ridiculous. There's, there's no information on this. So if, there, if there's secret data on this to, to go through the skin, uh, uh, the world certainly doesn't know about it. And it's, it's used in, in a non-lethal situation. And people generally recover in a matter of hours from being exposed to this compound. Mm. But we've gone from being told it was a certain type of nerve agent, that that could cause death in hours, to it being, no, it can't have been that, it must now be something else, to various ways that it may or may not have been administered. With every passing day, it seems to be less and less clear who, what, where and why. Where does that leave the OPCW, then, in, in being able to actually properly identify what was used? Right. So, so this, this compound, BZ, this 3 quinucleotide benzylate, has a totally different structure than any nerve agent. Nerve agents have phosphorus. This has no phosphorus in it. So it's a very easy distinguishing to make by, by a chemical analysis. There's no problem in making this analysis. So I don't know who has done the, 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 this work. If, if it is a BZ agent, and not a nerve agent, uh, that, that's, uh, that would be a, a gross, gross error in chemical analysis. If there was a BZ agent mixed with a nerve agent, that would be something new to me. Generally, you do not have to incapacitate a person in order to kill them. You just kill them with a the nerve agent. It never is used uh, in conjunction with a BZ to incapacitate them. So none of this makes chemical sense. OK, appreciate your expertise in this. Professor James Tour, organic chemist and chemical weapons expert, thanks very much for your time.